So hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dimitri Sirota. Welcome back to Big Ideas on the Go. Uh, I'm excited to have with us the Chief Privacy Officer for NEC globally, uh, Beatrice Ru Ruiz Bito, uh, coming to us from uh, sunny Spain on the plane. Um, it's, it's sunny, although a little bit cooler than where, where I am in here in Miami. So uh, Beatrice, uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting me. So Beatrice, you know, I think it'd be interesting for our audience to to hear a little bit about kind of your background. And, and I think you're actually our first guest ever uh, from Spain. So maybe talk a little bit about how you became a CPO at NEC uh, and maybe talk a little bit about the journey with the particular perspective of somebody in Europe, uh, right in the center of kind of GDPR land. Wow. How shall I start with that question? Yeah. So basically, uh, I have a background in law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So partially, most of my professional career was focused on being a in house lawyer. Yeah. For different type of companies. Um, some of them focused on the Spanish market. Others more global. Yeah. And of course, as an in-house lawyers, multitask activities, I was in charge of advising my internal customers on commercial law, data privacy, compliance, and risk management. And like two years before we started hearing about the GDPR, I said, well, why are you not fully dedicated to privacy? if this is something that you really like it and you really want to focus your future on. And I changed a little bit, yeah, my background. I moved to London and I start uh, working as DPO, fully dedicated my time. Right now, yeah, I work for NEC and my primary responsible is to ensure that the company's data privacy policies and practices are in compliance with relevant, relevant laws and regulations around the globe. And I am also responsible for developing and implementing data privacy strategies that, it, that are aligned with the company business and objectives values. Yeah, basically this is how I started in privacy. Well, look, it's a good place. It's a good place to be involved, obviously, not only <laughs> I think since GDPR kicked things off, I, I forget how many countries now have um, uh, uh, have privacy regulations, but it's the majority. And now, of course, U.S. states are, are doing something similar. Um, you know, obviously, one of the big topics right now in the world, I presume this is also true in 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 Spain, is AI. Wow. How are you thinking about um, that intersection between privacy and AI? What is the role for a CPO? Well, that's clear that all organizations should be start thinking about AI, yeah? And because it's also related with privacy initiatives, we also need to ensure, right, that these technologies are used in a responsible way and deserves the trust of users and society. Um, so basically, uh, um, when we talk about AI uh, frameworks, yeah, somehow are always be connected with privacy. So that's clear for me that AI has affected the privacy landscape. Um, I'm going to skip, yeah, what it happened last year, this year related to many, many AI systems into the market. And, and that is also clear that many governments, yeah, um, practitioners from different sectors are all working toward answers on how an AI system can be used, right? In a responsible and ethical way. Um, we also see what happened last week in Europe, for instance, but not only in Europe, right? We are seeing many, many proposed regulations around the world. And for me, it's clear that the days where the companies were self-policing their own AI, pro AI project, sorry, are coming to end. And regulations are, will be forcing, yeah, companies 
to be focused on AI, ethics, transparency, privacy, amongst other uh, topics, as we suffer when the GDPR came into force. So I think that it's important to understand the privacy requirements, yeah, that currently apply to AI, because mostly of them are not new, and the resources to build a compliant data protection program for AI. So privacy professionals for me are getting involved somehow on AI governance, and we are all suffered the challenge of how and the need to understand the complex interplay between privacy regulations and broader developments regarding the responsible use of AI. And so, tell yeah. me this, you know, maybe you could maybe touch a little bit about for their audience. Obviously, the European AI regulation is pretty new. Um, what specifically does it cover? How do you think about it? Uh, and you also touched a little bit on AI ethics. I would love to get your thoughts and opinion about that intersection or that interplay between the regulation and AI ethics. Maybe you could expand on that a little bit. Well, first of all, I think that let's clarify that what happened last week. So that's clear that the trialog agreed on the basics, right? Uh, there were a lot of discussions, a lot of debates uh, for the last three years, yeah. And that's clear that we have something, yeah. But now we need to see how it's going to be in a paper, right? So I wouldn't advance that on that right now. I will be prudent and see um, what is coming in the new in the next uh, couple of months. Uh, what I what I think is that even though the AI Act will not be enforced mostly in, until 2026, we will see partially, yeah, uh, the, apl the applicability on certain topics. This is what I, this is what I expect is going to happen um, next year. Related to AI ethics, yeah, well, Ethics is not it's not the same meaning when we are talking about privacy, right? So I know that privacy is much more focused on on individual rights, yeah, on how to protect the individual uh, the rights and freedoms of individuals. I think that ethic uh, AI ethic ethics that goes beyond that. We are talking about the human rights, not only related to privacy. So we will need to see what's happening in Europe, yeah, in the next yeah. couple of months, yeah. So lots, lots to still do, obviously, and lots to still kind of figure out. Um, you know, one thing uh, I'm kind of curious about, so you probably collaborate quite a bit with your security counterpart. Is that a fair statement? Yes. So what is that inter interplay between kind of data protection, data security, and kind of what you're doing on the privacy side that also deals with some of the data integrity. What is that, you know, how should privacy professionals be thinking about that right, right interplay? Where do you guys collaborate? How do you leverage security? Um, wh what could you share? Well, I can say that, of course, anything related to, 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 to IT, yeah, I consider them as my, VIP stakeholders, right? Um, we are so focused on how we process personal data, but they are really focused on how to protect that personal data. So that's clear that privacy cannot be working without IT. So the connection, it's, it's, it, we are so linked, right? So we can, as legal professionals, yeah, we understand the, the 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 principles of the law, right? But we need the IT and the technical um, feedback in many of in, in in well in 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 all of the projects that we are we are dealing right now. And I think that I would like to also to highlight the privacy enhancing techniques. Yeah, I think this is something that really interests me 
right now mm, the most because coming from a legal background, yeah. Um, and even though in the laws, yeah, you have reference to technical and security measures, is not our expertise, yeah. So I think that working with them, yeah, those departments work together, be aligned, integrate security with privacy is a very good best practice. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe I'll ask you the same question about on the data side, right? In terms of data governance, uh, I'm interested to see, obviously you touch on both, both areas, right? I think people that kind of steward and govern data What's your interaction with your counterpart in the CDO organization? And, and what do you see as the right um, kind of back and forth? Well, I think that, of course, that the governance today is increasing in regulatory complexity, right? Uh, as far as the technology is evolving, uh, more data is there, right? And I also think that the awareness is important. I think that stakeholders, not so the users, yeah are more aware about what is happening, right? So I think that to me, yeah, uh, for instance, privacy is evolving beyond regulatory compliance, yeah? And we are into a new era on which uh, data privacy is integrated with data governance and trust that use. So I think that privacy is more significant share of visibility around organizations and external um, and external stakeholders. And, and in, ter in terms of the organization, out of curiosity, does that propagate down to people that are building new applications? Yeah. Uh, does it propagate up to your executive leadership? Yes. Yes, that's right. That's how it works. Okay. And so every everybody is attuned to it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Look, I think that's great. Um, you know, maybe to kind of round out, you know, and kind of finish off, obviously everyone's talking about AI. We all know that we're, we're one year in, um, you know, we talked a little bit about your thoughts there. I am curious about, do you see some of the privacy use cases like identifying personal data as one of the top concerns around AI? Like what does your AI team tell you when when they come to you about privacy in terms of how they're preparing their data, how they're um, how they're um, uh, curating the data that they want to use to train their systems. <laughs> well, I think that well, I think that assessed. So when you are dealing with this kind of project, yeah, I think that it's important to understand which are the risks, yeah, underneath, yeah. So it's not really only privacy. There are many, many other risks that can be connected, right? When we are going, to, when we are talking about AI. So for me to do a proper assessment, yeah, it's really, really important. Um, try to mitigate the initial risks, yeah, yeah, and yeah, and work on those risks in order. Well, I'm not saying that sometimes you can eliminate 100% all the risks, yeah? It's very challenging when we are talking about this kind of technology, but at least reduce, yeah? So the ideal is to not to warm individuals, yeah? With this kind of technologies and respect their private lives and their private rights. Yeah, no, I understand. Look, I, I, think, I think it's uh, certainly gonna be a, a place where there's gonna be a lot of activity in the coming years, um, uh, clearly, because I do, I do kind of see it myself as, as one of the top concerns, um, uh, especially with some of these new hacks that we're seeing in, in AI uh, in terms of prompts and so forth. So uh, that's great. Uh, okay, well, listen, Beatrice, thank you very much for coming onto the show and sharing a little bit about your wisdom and experience uh, in the privacy world. Uh, I do appreciate uh, you joining us. I know it's a little bit later in the day there. So thank you again. Um, and uh, just as a reminder for our listeners of the show, um, don't forget to subscribe uh, to Big Ideas on the Go. Um, and, and please do leave reviews, especially if they're positive reviews. So uh, Beatrice, thank you. Thank uh, you thank so you much.
<laughs> yeah, thank you. And then and enjoy. Hopefully you have a kind of um, a moderate warm winter in Madrid. I'm sure it's going to be beautiful. Thank you.